But once I started playing state level, India level, there are a lot of players, including Indian players, I am Vijay, Vishani De, Vikas Panji, we had some senior players from Goa, Bruno Putino, Roy Barreto, Godfrey Ferreira. These players were some of my idols when I started playing as a kid. So, many of them. But at the end, it's your passion and love that has to take you. You can get inspired, but hard work has to come from you. Thank you. And it is also for the other kids. What are those two to three things you should you would advise them? Because everybody cannot go to the level of a football team. But if they have the passion, they can follow up it and grow and build that thing. So what do you would, what is the advice you would give at least two to three things to them? Okay. First of all, I'm also a parent. I've got three kids and my first kids are twins, boy and girl, they're just eleven plus. My younger daughter is 10, she's going to be 10 tomorrow, 25th. So I've got three kids and I've got the same concern like you as well as a parent. My advice obviously for the kids, in fact I just want to tell you that my son is in my football academy, my Chukutia football academy in Gurgaon. So it's a residential academy, he's studying and playing there. So I put him there because as a 9, 10 year old boy he wanted to be a footballer. So I felt it's very unfair if I don't give him that opportunity and chance to become a footballer. Obviously. He will have to see how he enjoys what he is doing and so far the last two years it's been a bit difficult for everyone of us because of pandemic but he's so far enjoying it. So my advice is first I think kids should keep playing football especially sports or football because whether you become professional footballer or not it's important for them to play sports and especially football because football is one sport that really teaches you how to become a team. And when you start playing from this age, what it really helps the kid is to really enjoy that win and also at the same time experience that defeat. And that I think is very, very important because I've experienced and I've, you know, through that experience of my football life, now when I, when I retire, I do a lot of other things which I won't succeed, a lot of things which I do succeed, other things as well. But it, teach, it teaches you way of life and that's what football will give you. It teaches you how to be a team person. When you lose, you don't feel disheartened because you've got another match coming. Whether you run or whether you play football, there's always next opportunity coming in sports. And that's how football teaches you. If you lose today, you should not feel low because you've got another match coming. That's the same when you win as well. You can't feel that I'm the best and I'm the boss, but you've got to perform next match. And that's how I think it teaches kids in that way. But if you're looking at becoming a professional footballer and they want to be professional and make a career, 
I think for parents it's very important that by the time they reach standard 12, 11, 12, it's difficult for all of us to decide because a lot of kids want to become footballer at the age of 16, 17. But if they are not making it to the school team and they are not even making for a Goa under 16 sub junior team and not even included in a village team in Goa, then I think option for the kid to also see is that you need to have alternative career going along with football. That's very, very important. But at the age of 16, 17, you are playing for Goa State team under 16, you are playing in FC Goa, Delco, Salgokers, or Churchill Brothers. Then you have a good chance of saying, okay, I want to take a chance to become a professional footballer. And that's where I think parents should support. If he's getting into Churchill Brothers IV team, and if he's getting into Delco or FC Goa, then I think we should encourage kids to give a shot at being, taking as football as a career. But if they're not making it to the school team at the age of 16 or Goa under 16, then they should not stop playing, but they should also focus more on studies. So that's the only advice from an experience where I'm a father as well, so I think that's the only best. I don't know whether it's the best advice or not, but that's what I feel is. The scorer for today. So give, tell us your name and give him a round of applause, everybody. Active player. Okay. Again, that's a, it's a tricky one. The school is divided between Messi and Ronaldo. That's a very, very difficult to answer because you don't really have one favorite player. I, for me, it started with Maradona. Every tournament, every matches you come, there are different, different players. So, yes, for me right now, if you look at one of the best players in India is obviously Sunil Chetri. But other player who's doing really well from Goa. Uh, this year, I've not been able to see him quite much, but Brandon is somebody whom I really felt at least earlier in I said he had a great, great uh, tournament. Uh, so in India, I think Sunil obviously is, is a senior player, but young players, we've got goalkeeper Dhiraj. Uh, I felt when I was working with All India Football Federation as a technical, uh, that time when he was playing for the 17 World Cup, I felt you know, Dhiraj is one of the players who's going to make it big. So Dhiraj is there, Brandon from Goa. Uh, it's. I think the one player who was from Goa is uh, Romeo. Ro Romeo. Romeo was promising. I don't know what's happened because in football sometimes you, be, you get a bit unlucky in terms of injury. So Romeo, I think, had gone through that difficult phase. He was one bright star. In, if you're looking at world football, I think uh, Messi for me. <laughs> But it's a very tricky answer. I don't know if you'll understand as, as a footballer, you'll understand later on. But if I was a manager, I would definitely sign Ronaldo rather than Messi. Uh, there are various reasons. But if I have to watch, buy a ticket to go and watch, then I would definitely go and watch Messi, not Ronaldo. So, that's too different. Why I choose Messi is because I feel he's natural, gifted. Uh, Messi can sleep for one year, two years without playing football and he can do the same trick after coming in. Obviously, Cristiano Ronaldo is a great player, but he is a machine. He is one truly professional player which I think everyone should watch and idolize. And I am sure you guys have seen, I just repeated in the school as well. You saw what Cristiano Ronaldo did in the Euro Cup. He removed, what he removed? He removed a Coca-Cola bottle from there. <laughs> Make sure you guys don't you should learn that. So no more Coca-Cola, Pepsi, junk food, burgers, chips, nothing. You all should healthy. You all should eat healthy. Listen to your parents. That is the first thing. It's not about professional football. It's about being healthy, living healthy. So no junk foods. Okay? Once in a while it's okay. But don't force your mom and dad to take you to KFCs and all, this, all the time. So once in a while it's okay. So no junk foods first. Not to start. Just whisper to me that we have time to maybe one or two more questions. One or two more questions. I will, now is the present crisis of Barcelona. We Barcelona, we Barcelona again. <laughs> well, Barcelona, we Barcelona again. So I think every club goes through the good times and the bad times. And uh, I think Barcelona had some great years and I think it's still one of the best clubs in the world. Obviously, a couple of years I think that going through a rough patch, especially with initially Xavi, Iniesta, then now Messi leaving. And uh, I don't know exactly, but I think there is some in terms of uh, uh, paying the players salary-wise, finance-wise, I think they're struggling a bit. But uh, Barcelona is a club that will always bounce back. 
And every club goes through that kind of situation all the time. You look at English clubs, look at Man U, one of the best clubs in the world once upon a time. Right now it's struggling. My favorite team which I supported throughout many, many years, Arsenal has been struggling for a long. So I'm hoping Arsenal is going to bounce back soon as well. So yeah, I think uh, Barcelona, I think, is still one of the best and the most followed club around the world. And I think it definitely bounce back. Did you have a favorite? Father God, I would say. There you go. Uh, hi, sir. I'm Anushka. I had a question. Uh, what influenced you to become a professional footballer? And I'll add to that. If you were not a footballer, what would you also be, sir? I think the biggest influence was my love and passion for the game. You know, when you grow up in Northeast and in Sikkim, you only did during those days, which is 70s and 80s, was play football only. Even till today, I think all we only do one thing is play football and music. So, the inspiration of me getting into becoming a professional footballer was first this love and passion which I had for the sport. And that story, I think, carried on. But yeah, that's how it started. Thank you very much. You made it here. What a special time for all the children. Go and sit there. Sit there. From the grassroots level, Two half Olympic pools, 
as well as another plunge pool. So it's, it's a, I do believe that this is a place where the children will flourish, families can flourish. Um, after this year and a half of COVID, people being cooped up inside, I think the timing of getting the project ready is great because people will come outdoors, uh, get out there, play, you know, use the tennis courts, use the, use the football ground, the basketball courts, get into the swimming pool. So uh, we're very excited to finally deliver uh, Goa's first child-centric development. We are very excited with it and we do hope that we'll be able to do many more such projects in the near future. Uh, with that little introduction, I'd like to hand it over to Mr. Bai Chandu. Here is River of Joy uh, to learn to play football. Thank you. Good afternoon. First of all, obviously it's great to be back in Goa. I think I'm coming back after quite a few years. And uh, in fact, today morning I posted one picture of myself in, in the hotel saying that how much I'm happy to be back in Goa. And I'm sure, I think a lot of you remember that, uh, you know, when the not ISL, but when we had I leagues and national league camps, we were based mostly out of Goa. And uh, some of my best memories of football has been in Goa. So it's always great to be back here. Uh, coming to, I think, our association with Deva, uh, Gera, River of Joy, BBFS is definitely it's a great honor for us to be associated because let me give you a brief, brief background about why we have football schools. In fact, we are one of the largest football grassroots program in India today. And we've got more than 3,000, 4,000 kids training every day with 100 plus coaches and almost 60, 70 centers across India. But what is the most important thing about UBFS is it's not just about quantity, but we deliver quantity as well. Our coaches, 80% of our coaches are all qualified coaches. We manage and help and support coaches to get uh, the license from EFC, which uh, is very, very important. We are also a football academy that has given A plus category in India, which very few academies in India have got that. But at the same time, what we are proud of is in the last 10 years, we've got six players that have gone on to play for India in different age groups under 15, under 16, throughout academy. And we've got a number of players that's gone on to graduate from PBFS and gone on to play for ISL and IT clubs across India. So we're very proud of that. At the same time, kids across India, in fact, one of our kids was in PBFS in Shillong. He was training there, our coaches scouted and told us the main under, six, under 15 team, under 15 team coaches that there's a great talent. And that's how we brought this player from Shillong. We didn't play for under 15, BBFS we play our ID, uh, which a lot of clubs from Goa play, play our tournament as well. And that's how we were spotted and got selected for India. So wherever the kid is playing, whether it's in Gera here in Goa or Shillong, Manipur, Bangalore, if there is a talent, we give that talent the platform and we can compete with the best of players and then we go on to play for India and make a career out of the football. So yes. Uh, we want to make sure that we give that kind of platform and support to the kids. What we are very happy with Gera River Joy is that, you know, a lot of, I think, complexes, housing complexes just come and sell the property. But I think the quality of living in that property is very, very important. And especially now I'm a parent as well. And when we, though I live in Sikkim, but when I live in Calcutta, when I live in, uh, in Punjab, in Delhi, I think it's important when we live in the places like this, you, know, you have a great house, that's great, but if you don't have things for kids to do, then I think, you know, somewhere you feel that something's missing. So what is great about Gera is there are a lot of opportunities given to the buyers, the owners here, and we've got some of the best academies in terms of cricket, swimming, we've got uh, even dance, uh, seven hour dance uh, academy here. So I think it's just not about buying a property and living here, but it's also for kids and also elders to have a good quality of life. At the same time, when you have tie up with BBFS or a wife property and the tennis academy, it's just not, a, not about this tie up, but if the kid is highly talented, potential, he's got a passion to do it, you know, it's about getting him the right support 
and platform go on, go on to play this dream. So I think that's where we're very happy and proud to be associated with Kira. And hopefully I think kids will enjoy football here. It's a great big property. You've seen uh, you know, there's a futsal ground here. But uh, I think Kira has set an example to a lot of builders across India that just not building the houses and selling it, but also giving up the quality of life to live in that property. So I think this is the model which we all need to across India we need to see it and hopefully I think we as buyers uh, across because I've got flat in Calcutta as well. Uh, so we need to also see that uh, there are especially small facilities given to the property like what we realize there. So we are very happy to be associated and we look forward to the association and hopefully I think people buy here and people playing football here will be their best. We will definitely hope to get some great talent out of the property as well. But uh, uh, trust me that if there is a talent and there is a passion even in Gera, uh, here in the academy, we will make sure we will support the people and we want to give them in the future. Thank you very much. We do have a quick uh, mission exchange between two main concepts of the brothers and for children. And this certainly is a moment to speak. So we exchange it, we have. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This shows the support, commitment, love of uh, Mr. Bajju Bhujia for us here at Yara Zubo of Joy. I'm here right now for the photo opportunity. She no, is a Rohit's daughter and the fourth generation getting into the business, so, as Rohit mentioned yesterday. She's also been going to drive it, which I said, with Home's concept to another level since we started in the world. <laughs> So Gera, Gera has completed 50 years this year, so that's another great occasion for us. 50 years of excellence, 50 years. Okay, we have a plan to get into the stage later. Give our sense of competition for the team. Thank you. 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 Uh, definitely yes in future. I think we've just started our uh, association here. So a lot of our uh, academies and centers, wherever in each state we have, we play local leagues there. Because it's important for kids to compete as well. And uh, Goa is just the start. We just started our first project with Gira here. But in future we want to obviously build uh, and hopefully play at least the local leagues around in Goa so that you know the talent is is very that kind of exposure. So, yes. Uh, there are many academies also in Goa as well. So how does DGFS school stand out among those? I think for why we start, uh, why we stand out and why we will be able to sustain and do really well is because I think the expertise in Indian football are with us. You know, a lot of foreign academies come, I'm not saying they're bad, but what they do is they come and train and they go. Now a lot of kids in the academies are talented. They need every step to be guided. Whereas DPFS is not that. A lot of foreign clubs, they come in, train, they go, and they don't really guide because it's not their job to really. And you can't expect in training in Sikkim or Goa or Kerala or Bangalore to go and play for Manu, Arsenal or Barcelona. Because they'll have to play the clubs here. So I think DPFS has got every level of step to guide them and put them in the right direction. Because from the time he's 13 years old, he's having two plays under 30, i.e. Then he plays under 15. If he's 17, 18, playing really well, we have a group of United City Football Club, we also have a club in Delhi, Garwa, FC, which we play. So they go on to play in semi professional, and from there they get spotted and go on to play for uh, you know, clubs, ISM and ID clubs. So that way, in fact, United City, one of the best football we produce was Sandesh Jingam, the 17 year old boy. He's the only player right now playing in Europe. So, and even through DDFS, we've got a lot of players playing with me. So we've got a step to guide and make sure that talented players who've got passion and desire and dream to play for India, we have that support system to guide them right through. And yeah. that's the difference between us and the academies. Uh, it's very difficult to really give you an exact ratio, but uh, you know, a lot of kids, I'm not saying everyone, but there are 20, 30 percent of parents who send their kids to just become fit and not really look at making the kid professional, but they want their kid to be healthy and they send it to BGFS. What we have is we have a 30% uh, of scholarship scheme in BGFS. So this 30% of kids is 100% scholarship. We bring in the best of talented from across India and we give them 100% scholarship with education as well. 
So this 30% of kids are kept with a lot of other kids who are into our academy. And uh, you know, through that, if you look at the United States, six kids that have gone to play for India are mostly the scholarship kids, which we have brought them through scholarship, hundred percent scholarship. Uh, not many players who pay and stay with BVFS. Uh, around 70% of the ones who are paying have not gone to become professional. But 80% of our players under scholarship which we bring in 30%, if you've got 100 kids, we make sure that 30 kids are scholarship kids. So those 30 kids, 80% of them gone to become professional players and want to be different kids as well. So that's the kind of question. You know, I think, I think when you play in uh, these kind of leagues and you play with proper coaching and training, right, it's really good for children. You may not turn around and get into professional football, but, but what you learn in terms of teamwork, in what you learn in terms of getting coaching, what you learn in terms of playing with a captain, what you learn some of these kids then play as captain of that team. So just the life lesson which you learn when you're going out and playing sport, and especially when it's a team sport like this, I think that value is sort of underestimated for the kids who go through a program like this, who play the sport, and who may turn around and become you know, an executive you know, or a journalist, for example. But your learnings as a team player playing a sport is invaluable in life. So I wouldn't underestimate the value of going out and playing sport. Because at the end of the day, how many professionals in each sport can you actually have who work there and make a proper living? Right? So that's a very verified, highly talented group. But for the others, there's still tremendous value and tremendous opportunity. Uh, another question. Uh -huh. No, our facilities out here are only open for the children, owners and tenants. Uh, for, for, uh, for the child centric homes. Uh, that's very clear. Because the way the facilities are integrated into the development, the security related things, you know, who pays for maintenance, then it's commercial. Because we don't own these assets anymore. The, the swimming pools, the tennis courts are all handed over to the societies. Now for them to run this in a professional manner, to earn, to negotiate contracts, it's not their, it's not their business way. Really. So yes, if somebody in the society, they decide, okay, we'll allow someday something or the other, that may happen. But our model, the way it's been planned, is that this is only for the residents. It's an exclusive facility, and all these coaching academies are only for the children. And the other thing, just to, just to kind of cover, is the way we've done the model, is every single child in the development, will get a six-week free coaching program for football. We'll get a free six-week coaching program for tennis. We'll get a six-week dance program. So our objective and our goal, our objective and our goal is to turn around and give children the exposure. If they're good, if they enjoy it, then the parents will pay and take them for the next level of classes and then they go up the ladder. And then, like you said, you can get picked up and you can move further and on. Uh, in the performance recently, uh, can I have a comment on that? Since you are playing days till now, how much of the work you have seen in Indian football? See, I think uh, obviously Indian team is also going through a bit of challenge of his own. And uh, I think right now, sadly, but the fact is we are only relying on Sunil to deliver the results and goals, which is not good. So, yes, Sunil has been doing outstandingly well, but as a team, we need to do well. If I need to support when we succeed, the team has to succeed. And the difference, obviously, during our generation, my time and now, is we have a lot of players that could deliver and make a difference. We have great players, we have set up players who could you know, say that this player is equally as good as anybody else. But right now, I think, sadly, we have not been able to see a young player making a big impact. Which is very, very unfortunate. We are only relying on the industry. And when we played officers, Bruno, Vijay, and we have Sunil as well during our time, there are a lot of players, there are different guys, there are different guys, there are different guys, there are different guys, there are quality all across. But now I think uh, as a team, we need to see that quality all across, just not with Sunil. And if we don't have Sunil, then everybody is like looking what what is. So that is I think very very unfortunate and we need to make sure that young players right now in the national team will have to start delivering 
and getting the results just not school.